here in what I'll call golf playground at Pinehurst. This is my second time here alongside Eric Huster from Pinehurst. Eric, welcome to Golf Talk Canada. Thank you so much, Adam. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So we're here this week for the Addy Cup, and we're looking ahead now to the U.S. Open coming up in June. So we're six, seven, eight weeks away. How are preparations going right now? Preparations are, are uh, wide open. As you can see from behind me, we've got the grandstands and the corporate villages set up. Uh, we're not counting. We're 52 days away <laughs> from the first shot being hit at the 124th U.S. Open, our fourth U.S. Open since 1999, Adam. And so when you say U.S. Open, what does it mean to this property to host arguably the biggest tournament in all of golf? Well, it's, um, it's always an honor to host uh, the United States Open Championship. And this is a little different for us in 2024 because uh, since 2020, we were named the anchor site, uh, one of three anchor sites by the USGA to be anointed, if you will, uh, as a host site that will be on a reoccurring basis, which means we'll have four more U.S. Opens between 2024 and 2047. And, I mean, there's, we'll get into all the different courses here, all the prop because there are a lot of golf courses here, including one that just recently opened. But in terms of preparation, we, we see some grandstands already up here. When did the preparation for grandstands specifically, for that matter, uh, begin? The USJ always has a presence in Pinehurst. Uh, in fact, their championship management team is, is headquartered here. Um, but specifically to the grandstands and some of the infrastructure that you're seeing behind me, I would say that started probably about six months ago. Um, but clearly some of that is now manifesting itself uh, in the, just the scale uh, and the size of what they do um, is on full display now. So we couldn't be more excited, and we're going to have uh, – you know, 35,000 people a day come through our gates. Uh, cumulatively speaking, that's uh, this town will see about 250,000 people for the week. Uh, and then from a corporate hospitality standpoint, we're going to have uh, around 160 companies, mostly from North Carolina, activating for um, you know, client hospitality for the week. So very exciting, very big undertaking. Thankfully, we have the USJ which uh, you know, they're, 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 they're the pros at this. They, they do this for a living. We're, uh, we're in a great position just to be the host and provide you know, the, the wonderful hospitality that we're known for. And golf tournaments, whether it's the US Open or any tournament, don't happen without volunteers. How many volunteers will be involved this year? We got about 2,000 volunteers, <laughs> but here's the good news. Most of those volunteers come from the local community. And not many people realize, Adam, that we are a resort, but we also have a country club. So we're able to tap into the, the pool of volunteers at Piners Country Club, and they're always uh, ready, willing, and able to jump in and, and assist. It's, I'm so excited for, for the U.S. Open a little later this year. And the last time we saw Piners really on display on a, on a national scale in terms of U.S. Open, U.S. Women's Open was 2014. For those watching back then, what, if any, kind of differences will they see when they watch coverage this year? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. Um, from an agronomic standpoint, the greens on number two have been converted from bent grass to champion Bermuda. Uh, we've also added about 10,000 wiregrass plants, which is a native species to the area. So, um, but you know, we like to say, it's a little bit of a punch on here, number two is always US Open ready. We don't have to change the golf course, uh, materially change it to host the, the best players in the world. So um, we think it's gonna be ready and be a fair, fair test of golf. And so, you know, when, there's a great moment for Payne Stewart back, yes. you know, many, many moons ago. And the golf course obviously looked radically different in terms of the wiregrass, all the changes. When someone steps on property here for the first time, what can they expect, whether they're playing in the U.S. Open right. or one of us playing later this <laughs> afternoon at number two? Yeah, uh, I'm glad you mentioned Payne Stewart. This year will be the 20th anniversary uh, of his victory. Uh, as you can see, his, we memorialize his statue over your left shoulder. Um, it's someone's U.S. Open every day at Pinehurst, um, and we, we, we truly do believe that. And so uh, as you play number two today or as someone uh, comes into town from, from anywhere across the world, we feel like we're celebrating that U.S. Open spirit every single day. So we like to say that you know people come to Pinehurst, and we want them to connect with the soul of golf and the spirit of Pinehurst, and that's what we do every single day. And so I think the, the biggest change, if you go back to how the golf course is presented, now in 1999 it was – we had a lot of what we call monochromatic, a lot of over like overseeding and a lot of grass, and we stripped away all that back in uh, 2010 with Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw, and we we th we, you know, we think today the golf course is 
the way it's presented is an authentic type of course that Donald Ross would would, be, would appreciate. So excited to get back, get back out to number two and number four later this week too. And so that's number two, that's number four, but number 10. Yes. It just opened. Tell us about number 10. I'm, I'm wearing the logo. I'm trying to stand tall. <laughs> it's not quite as tall. <laughs> you got me by about six inches, but um, this is the sand mines. This is Piner Sand Mines, the logo that I'm wearing today. Just opened earlier this month, um, probably four weeks ago as of tomorrow. Um, very excited to have another golf course uh, in our arsenal. Uh, designed by Tom Doak, whose name is, whose face is on the Mount Rushmore of golf course architects. Um, the first one he's done in North Carolina. It's a really cool site. It's got some really big, bold, uh, you know, to, topography to it. Um, it's it's by itself, so that's it's a little bit of a sense of place. You leave the main campus. Um, we love, we celebrate the busyness of where we are today. This we kind of call it a national park. But you know, sometimes it's nice to go away and just be one in nature and have this beautiful walk. And so we think Pioneer Sand Mines is going to offer something that's distinct but yet complementary to what uh, what our golfers get at the main club. And there's so many great courses right here, and that's where we have to go to the cradle because you know, buddies trips, etc. People come out, they want to play 18 holes, then they want to go out and have some fun. For those who haven't been to the cradle yet, tell us about the cradle. I'm surprised we can't hear the music uh, <laughs> echoing through the, the air this morning. The Cradle is a fun factory. Um, we, uh, we brought it online back in 2017, and it just changed the game for Pinehurst. I mean, we are, we are we're known as a traditional destination, but per perhaps one that might have taken ourselves a little too seriously along the way. The Cradle just completely ripped the Band-Aid off and said, why not have fun? Bring fun and infuse it with the traditions of the game. And it's a wonderful uh, mix of, of, um, of what you can do at Pinehurst now. And um, every single day, you might hear roars that, that, that are shooting throughout the Cradle. It could be a hole-in-one. It could be a 10-year-old playing with, her, with his, his or her father or grandparent. It's multi-generational. And what I like about it, it lowers the barriers to entry into the game of golf. It only takes an hour to play. Mm -hmm. It's only $50 to play it. Um, and you, only, you, need, you need a wedge. You need a wedge and a putter, and that's it. So um, it is the most popular golf course by rounds at Pinehurst Resort. <laughs> that's crazy to think. You know, I'm glad you said by rounds. So before we wrap, I'm just genuinely curious. How many rounds of golf are played <laughs> daily here at Pinehurst, whether it's any of the 10, yeah. cradle, et cetera? Well, it's a, it's a big, big number, um, and I don't have that off the top of my head, but I'll tell you that the Cradle will do about 60,000 rounds a year. Um, Pinehurst number two generally will do probably close to 45,000, 50,000. So when you, you know, if, uh, it, maybe don't quote me on this, but I would say pro close to half a million rounds a year is what we see. Um, we are the largest golf resort uh, in the world um, with 10 golf courses, so we, uh, we celebrate the volume. Uh, we want people to, you know, to come to Pinehurst and, and to leave with unforgettable experiences, but I'll, I'll leave you with this. We had, a, we had a golf rider come through here a couple years ago, and he had, he had not been through in many years, and he witnessed all the changes and all the, the fun and the buzz. He said, you know what? He said, while so much has changed, nothing has been lost. And I think that was really something that we said, you know what, that's, we're doing things that are true to us. We're innovating, we're, we're evolving the brand, but we're also trying to be authentic to our DNA. So I think that speaks to what we're trying to do every single day. Well, Pinehurst number two hosting the 124th U.S. Open a little later this year. Eric, thanks for your time today. Great to be with you, Adam.